The first response, saying there's no miracles in life, is, is a yawn. And the second one is a gasp. You choose. I choose gasp. That's how I live my life. I choose gasp. I was telling these gentlemen here that their song, Eye of the Tiger, probably plays in my basement, or has played in my basement, for years, 5.30 every morning, as I get up to practice karate. Before going to the hospital, right? And I'd go downstairs many times at 5 a.m., 5.30, and I'd cry because I was exhausted and I needed to still go to work, but I wanted to practice karate. And I'd put this music on, Eye of the Tiger, and I'd say to myself, Gina, if you are not gonna practice and go to that tournament and come home with your medal and win, go back to bed. Just go back to bed. I'd put the music on, I'd work out for two hours, shower and come over here to the hospital. And that's, that's how I did it. Yeah. Eye of the tiger, yeah. Uh, as the mayor said, there's a long history here. And the history now is placed in our hands, the future history. We're commissioned to continue the creation of future history. The citizens here of Aurora have a fabulous opportunity. This is the great equalizer. Doesn't matter if we're rich, we're poor, tall, we're short, we're fat, we're thin, whatever it is. This is for everyone. The answers are in here and greatness can come out of this building. And there is one thing I want from this. That's what I want. I want greatness. I want to see and hear about Aurora citizens, young people that are going into to medicine, going into the sciences, going into politics, finance, and I want to hear your names, and I want to hear, they're from Aurora, Illinois, and that's going to happen. That is going to happen. My husband, as uh, the mayor said, wasn't fortunate enough to be able to go to school. He went to one year of high school, Lane Tech High School in Chicago, and he had to leave that school to help his mother and his family work. Pretty commonplace years ago. And he knew he wanted more for his family. He could never get up here, he would never get up here and speak in front of you. And he would never allow his name on the business that he owned, ever. So, he's smiling right now though, right Dick? He's smiling right now, he's okay with that. He's laughing out loud, he is, he is. Um, he was a straightforward type of guy. You always knew where he stood. I remember going into his car dealerships here in Aurora and his manager is running up to me and saying, Gina, Gina, Rich, Rich just told me such and such. What did he mean? And I'd make them repeat it. And I said, that's exactly what he meant. The man spoke from his heart. He spoke from his soul. He cared about the people that worked for him. No one ever had to worry about a sick day, if they ran out of sick days, if they became ill if they couldn't make the mortgage, he carried him. He carried him for six months, he'd carry him for a year. He did that out of the goodness of his heart. There were things that nobody knew about. If somebody's family member died, the funeral was taken care of. I remember he, he would come home and he said, Gina, you know, write a check, send a donation. Okay, honey, how much? And I go to write a check and he says, oh, no, you pay for the funeral. You know, and these things people didn't know because he was a quiet man. He loved to party, but he was quiet and he was private. But he was man's best friend. He was always very generous with his time and his talent. He mentored many, many car dealers and um, that have become very, very uh, successful over the years and have carried out his legacy in giving back to other people. He used to read encyclopedias A through Z. 
That was his regular thing. Every morning at the kitchen table, there'd be an encyclopedia open, and that's how he got his education. There is a set of encyclopedias in the library that you'll see, one of Rich's original sets that he read every single page. And then he would start all over again. So, the, um, thank you. I think we have to remember that we're all here to serve each other. Uh, Pope Francis um, has strong words for all, the rich man in all of us. And he says, whenever our interior lives become caught up in its own interests and concerns, there is no longer room for other people. And that's so true. We, we go through our daily lives and we're all focused on, of course, paying the bills and working and making money, but that's not the most important thing. What happens is we lose our compassion for other people. There becomes inequality. If the stock market drops, we hear about it on the news. Everybody hears about that going on. But in our own community, if one of our homeless people dies of exposure, we don't know anything about it, which is sad. And that's going to change. We've got the public library. They can come in and get warm, right? And they can read a book, right? So. And, you know, we don't have to feel obligated or guilty to do anything. We should want to do this. We should want to help our friends, our neighbors, our brothers, our sisters, out of a genuine joy, out of something from inside of us that says it's the right thing to do. It's a little conscience we have in us. Maybe it's your mother, right? It's something in us that's saying, this is the right thing to do. And it doesn't cost me anything. Because whatever we give back, we get back tenfold. And our joy grows to the extent that we share with other people. Today, all right, today is Flag Day. I think you all know that. And it's the 240th anniversary of the Army today. And um, today we have the West Aurora Air Force ROTC here to do the presentation of the flag. And I think we have to remember all the men and women that we don't see or think about or talk about until we need them those that are faceless and nameless strangers that have been called to duty, have been called to duty for our nation in the most trying times, and we've watched in awe as everyday people have been transformed into real heroes. And today, the flagpole is being dedicated in honor of Carlos Garcia. It, Mrs. Garcia may be here today. Lisa Garcia possibly is here today. And Carlos Garcia was a staff sergeant in the United States Marine Corps in Operation Desert Storm and the invasion of Panama. He was loved by many and he's in our hearts forever. He was an Aurora resident. And Lisa, are you there? Are you coming up here? No? Okay. Well, there's going to be a beautiful plaque, Lisa, on the flagpole. Oh, you're there. Oh, you're there. Okay. 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 Fabulous. Well, the, I just wanted just to thank everyone. I'm humbly grateful for giving my husband this honor and myself of naming a public building for him and in his honor and allowing his spirit to go on for generations. Um, this is a great opportunity and I know he's smiling right now. So now with that, the, rest, the West Aurora Honor Guard will present the colors. <laughs> 